The Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered 70 years ago, yet remain a source of fascination and academic debate. The story of how the first scrolls were found has been recounted for decades. How a Bedouin shepherd, Muhammad Adib, stumbled onto the first scroll jars. How the newly established State of Israel acquired the scrolls and how teams of archaeologists descended on the caves at Qumran, eventually digging up the remains of over 850 scrolls. Most of the scrolls are written in Greek and ancient Hebrew. Most of them are copies of the Bible. All the books of the Bible except uh, the scroll of uh, Esther are there. Also external books, new books that we didn't know of, new literary sources that are new uh, to us. Uh, and most of them were written in the new, this, the square Hebrew uh, letters. The original scroll team was led by Father Roland DeVoe of Echo Biblique. The hand-picked scholars tirelessly pieced together scroll fragments, working literally for years to translate the tattered parchments. Some scrolls found by the Bedouin would be retrieved from dealers and collectors. For example, the temple scroll found in Cave 11. Rescued by archaeologist Yigal Yadin, it was found under the floor of an antiquities dealer. This well-preserved scroll was vital in changing the agenda of Qumran scholarship by underscoring the halakhic aspect of many of the Dead Sea Scrolls, thus confirming them as authentically Jewish. The search for the scrolls and other artifacts took on a new and exciting twist in 1952 when Gerald Lancaster Harding, director of the Transjordan Department of Antiquities, turned his attention to Qumran, where he would supervise a team of Bedouin diggers. It was on his watch that the copper scroll was found in Cave 3. Among all the scrolls, it is strikingly different. The text of the Copper Scroll is neither a book nor a commentary, but rather a catalog of enormous wealth that some believe comes from the Holy Temple in Jerusalem. This unique document not only lists fabled riches, but gives specific directions as to where they are hidden. Two places in the text of the scroll reference a cache of treasures under the stairs. Mysterious man-made tunnels later found near the Dead Sea featuring stairs could be an exciting link to this ancient text. After its discovery, the Copper Scroll was the catalyst for an ongoing search that began with a member of the original scroll team, John Marco Allegro. Allegro supervised the unrolling of the nearly oxidized scroll in Manchester, England. He published his own translation and eventually went looking for the scroll's fabled treasures. Allegro would popularize the Copper Scroll with British television audiences, an act that would place him at odds with his contemporaries, and in later years he would continue to court controversy. A Texan, Vindal Jones, arrived at Qumran after distinguishing himself during the Six-Day War by helping Israelis spot nearly 60 enemy gun emplacements. He began his own search by digging at the massive Cave of the Column. His efforts would eventually yield a flask of oil, as well as mounds of a red substance believed to be a mixture of katorit, or temple incense. Bob Morgan, a commercial airline pilot, arrived in Israel one day in the 1980s and began a personal quest for the Copper Scrolls treasures. Armed only with John Allegro's book, he believed that the scrolls' inscriptions were a genuine guide. Key to his search is a reference to treasures buried under the steps, an intriguing connection to the curious tunnels cut into the desert floor just beyond the ruins of Urkanya. After years of furtive digging known only to a small circle, Bob enlisted the guidance and talents of Hebrew University archaeologist Dr. Oren Goodfeld. Though Bob is no longer involved, Professor Goodfeld continues searching for possible hiding places of items listed on the Copper Scroll. I found four tunnels, dates either to the late Iron Age, the, the late 
first temple period or to the second temple period. We conducted the excavation in two tunnels. Those are monumental tunnels that goes down in 45 degrees, two meter high, one meter wide, and steps are curved in the rock all the way down with niches to oil lamps on the wall side. The goal of the tunnels is not known, unfortunately, uh, but I assume that they meant to be a monumental burial, but they used them in a secondary use to hide the treasures that are mentioned in the copper scroll. Today, there are still questions surrounding the Dead Sea Scrolls, but new methods of analysis, such as virtual unwrapping, DNA analysis, and X-ray phase contrast tomography, offer fresh insights and reappraisals of the scrolls. But the larger, more pressing question is, are there more scrolls? Working with the Qumran Cave Project, Dr. Goodfeld continues to sift through the centuries of dust and debris fueled by the belief that only a fraction of the 240 caves have ever been properly excavated. That belief was confirmed when Oren and his team recently made worldwide headlines with the discovery of scrolls, fragments of scroll wrappings, and other remains in a cave at Qumran. The Qumran Cave Project believes that this recent find represents an even larger library of documents or ancient artifacts hidden centuries ago, waiting to be discovered. Our expectations of new finds is tempered by the knowledge that looting of these precious artifacts is a constant reality and has been so for decades. <laughs> Here, in an interview, Oren Goodfeld's trusted and longtime associate, Yosef, serves as an interpreter for 94-year-old Muhammad Ovayad, who tells of joining other Bedouin tribesmen at Qumran after the discovery of the first Dead Sea Scrolls. How they rushed quickly from cave to cave, hoping to find hidden gold, but only finding scrolls, which they later sold to Kando, the antiquities dealer in Jerusalem. The goal of the Qumran Cave Project is to unlock ancient mysteries that can only expand our present knowledge of Israel's historic saga, its monumental struggle with God and man. It is a quest to know the unknown, and it holds the potential for rewriting history, settling conflicts, and most of all, it is a human adventure that stirs the imagination. <laughs>